I want to go to Revelation chapter 3. Revelation chapter 3. And I want you to go to verse number 15. And we're going to preach for a few moments out of that chapter and in this place. I know thy works in verse number 15. That thou art neither cold nor hot. I would thou wert cold or hot. So then because thou art lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth. Because you say I'm rich and increased with goods and, and have need of nothing, and know not that thou art wretched, miserable, poor, blind, naked. I counsel thee to buy of me gold tried in the fire, that thou mayest be rich, and white raiment, that thou mayest be clothed, and that the shame of thy nakedness do not appear. Anoint thine eyes with thy salve, that thou mayest see. As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Be zealous, therefore, and repent. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come into him and will sup with him and be with him. To him that overcometh will I grant to sit with me in my throne, even as I also overcame, and then sat down with my father in his throne. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit say unto the churches. 1 Samuel chapter 3 and verse 3. And air. The lamp of God went out in the temple of the Lord where the ark of God was. Samuel was laid down to sleep. That the Lord called Samuel and he answered, Here am I. And he ran unto Eli and said, Here am I, for thou callest me. He said, I called not. Lie down again. And he went and laid down. The Lord called yet again Samuel. And Samuel arose and went to Eli and said, Here am I, for thou didst call me. He answered, I called not, my son, lie down again. Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord. Neither was the word of the Lord yet revealed to him. And the Lord called Samuel again the third time, and he arose and went to Eli and said, Here am I, you called me. Eli perceived the Lord had called the child. Therefore Eli said unto Samuel, Go lie down, and it shall be if he call thee, you shall say, Speak, Lord, for thy servant heareth. I want you also in Leviticus 24 and 3, which is where this location is. Without the veil of the testimony in the tabernacle of the congregation shall Aaron order it from the evening unto the morning before the Lord continually. It shall be a statute forever and your generations. He shall order the lamps upon the pure candlestick before the Lord continually. Everybody look at your neighbor and say continually. Father, I pray for the power and the fire of God to rest upon your people today, Father God. Not just in our atmosphere, but within our hearts and lives. Father, do a great and mighty quick work in the short amount of time that we have left. Extend grace. Extend mercy. And Father God, make it easy to preach, but yet easy to hear. And Father God, let growth, let multiplication happen. And subtraction where it needs taken out of the way. In Jesus' mighty name. Let everybody shout amen, amen. and amen. Let's, let's clap our hands and thank him for the word. Let's clap our hands and thank him for what we feel. Come on, come on, let's thank him. Woo. Oh, I feel revival. <laughs> I feel revival in here. From a scriptural standpoint, when you try to define what cold means, it's just simply chilly. It means chilly. You'll hear people, especially the old saints, talking about being chilly. They won't always say they're cold because cold means a lot of things, but chilly gets right to the point. When the chilly, they mean to explain to those around them something needs to change in this atmosphere. I can't stay here. I can't dwell here. I'm in an uncomfortable spot. I need something to be done because I'm chilly. The meaning of hot is zestos. It means boiled by implication. Just simply means hot. Just means hot. Here's how temperature works because I think folks really need to understand that cold is not measured. Heat is. Temperature is a measure of kinetic energy of atoms in an object or a space. The more average energy these atoms have, the hotter the temperature. At absolute zero, the atoms have no energy and would stop moving completely. 
Let me talk to you about atmospheric pressure and its relation to what we're preaching on. The boiling point of water and any other substance depends on the atmospheric pressure, which changes with elevation. At higher altitudes, at higher altitudes, the pressure is lower, and so water boils at a lower temperature. In other words, the higher you are, the less heat it takes to boil. Cold does not enter into you, it's the heat that leaves you. Can I keep on preaching right here? Cold doesn't enter your body when you feel cold. It's you actually losing heat out of your body. People try to measure cold, but that's not how you measure temperature. You measure the amount of heat that you have or have left. And so I want to, as we talk about the natural, I want us to understand that in the spiritual, there are also applications for us to understand where it is we are in 2022. Don't you dare call me old fashioned, old fogey, or old time preaching. All of these above categorically simply point to the fact we sure need a move of God bad. The fire of the Lord is all throughout scripture. It represents light. It's fueled by fire to create light for your path. Used by Abraham and the list continues to go on and on. When you think about the cloud by day that was a visible form of God's glory and the fire by night that he saw and watched through the fire, that you understand that fire has always been. From the first book to the last, fire is a major representation of both things in the physical but also in the spiritual as well. I'd rather be on fire. I'd rather be exactly where God wants me to be I'd rather be in a fiery service. And oftentimes, if you're going to put me in a furnace, you might as well heat it up. Because the greater the fire, the more purified you're going to get. Push your neighbor and say, thank God for the fire. It's amazing that if you leave a window open or a door, it's an opportunity for cold to come in. If there's places around you that you don't get sealed up, you've got to be cautious that you make certain that no breeze comes in that can pull the heat from you or drive away the heat from you. When you talk about cold, it affects everything. When cold hits water, it freezes. When it rains and it's cold, it goes from rain and turns to snow. The fact is cold freezes everything up. For most diesel mechanics that know so much more than I do about the subject, you will see most of those trucks being plugged in overnight when it's cold in the winter. Because what it does is it allows heat to that motor to keep that oil to a place where it can easily start the next day without damaging the motor because the cold has affected it. When you shiver, You should be thankful when you shiver because it is the defense mechanism of your body that's telling you, I'm trying to move to warm myself up. When your teeth chatters, it is almost an instantaneous response when too much cold gets in where you're warm and you feel the fire of what's around you keeping you alive. And when the cold gets in, your teeth start to chatter. Your body starts to shiver. That is an indication that you better migrate quickly back to where the heat is or something's going to happen and you are going to, uh, hypothermia starts to set in and the next thing you know, you were cold, you were hurting and then things go numb. Then circulation breaks down and then you are going to compromise your fingers and your toes and your outer extremities to the point where your core gets too cold and your whole body 
body is then going to go into a painless state and before you know it you are going to drift off to sleep and they will find you covered by snow and ice and you will die because you can't get out of a cold and frigid place unless you get the fire back. When someone doesn't feel good, I came from the old school where when you fell down and got cut, they put methylate on you. And it made the cut look a lot worse than it really was. And then hydrogen peroxide came in and it started bubbling all over. But grandma always said the best was the peroxide. Um, and then we also went back to, to, to the little red beaker and it come out and it got put all, can I preach in the house? Can I keep on preaching? And if that didn't help, whenever you didn't feel good, then the, the first thing my grandma would do, if I walked up and said, Grandma, I'm not feeling good, she'd go to laying her hands on my forehead. She'd want to know how warm or how hot I was. And the next thing you know, she went over to the counter and she got a, a, a thermometer. Uh-huh. And she'd stick that little glass thermometer in my mouth and tell me to lift my tongue up and after a few moments she would gauge my temperature when something's not right you check somebody's temperature I went to the doctor a couple weeks ago not because anything's wrong not because I wanted to go but I had to go and so I went to the doctor and the first thing they did when I walked in they wanted to see if I still weighed what I weighed the last time and I jumped up on the scale. I told her before I even looked at it, I said 235. And I was 235.9. Hallelujah. After that, she wanted to check my blood pressure, 128 over 79. I said, you got the wrong guy. She said, no, you are 128 over 79. You know what come out of my mouth? I said, hallelujah, Jesus. I said, I can go home right now. Thank you, Lord. Oh, no, no, no. I'm going to check your oxygen level, and then I want to know what your temperature is. They always want to know your, do you know when you're, when you come into church, your pastor always wants to know what your temperature is? You know when you go home and you, you're not feeling just right, the first thing they want to do is make sure your temperature is right. To make sure that something is not going on inside that body that is driving your temperature up or down. And I've noticed when you need to break a good sickness, you get covered up with every blanket you have until you are broken down into shivering and all of a sudden the temperature breaks and sweat comes out because the infection Infection is being pushed out of your body and the next thing you know you have soaked the sheets because you were shivering one minute but you got over that infection and your body pushed that thing out my God I feel the Lord in here some people have gotten so cold but what the Lord is really telling you I had to get you right here so you can shiver real good to push the infection out and get back to the fire Can I keep on preaching? One degree of change on our thermostat at home affects everything in our atmosphere. One degree. I can be downstairs and we have an upstairs and, and so now, you know, there, there's life's hacks, I call them. You can cheat a little bit. And seem like in the summertime it's hot upstairs and in the wintertime it's cold upstairs. Well, a guy came over one time and he looked at our system and he said, I can put a blower in between the blower on the furnace and your upstairs and you'll have your own separate dial. So whatever's coming out of here will blow better and greater into the upstairs. It helps push the flow. It helps push the air into the atmosphere. One degree can change everything at my house. I'm telling you unequivocally, there are people sitting under the sound of my voice that need to hear if you will just turn it up one degree, it might make the difference in your entire life. If you'll turn your praise up one degree, if you'll turn your worship up one degree, if you'll turn your shout up one degree, if you'll turn your obedience up one degree, if you'll step one degree greater,
atmosphere. Some of you need to make a change. Some of you need to turn it up a little bit. Some of you need to darken the church doors on a Wednesday night every now and again. To the people that have to work, I'm not talking to you. People need to come to church a little more often on Wednesday night. Amen. I'm just going to keep preaching until you help me out. Because it don't work like that around here. Everybody needs to turn it up a little bit and go to church now and again on a Sunday night. Everybody needs to turn it up now and again and come down to the altar and pray and kneel down and say, God, forgive me. Help me, Lord. Father, let, never let me get cold. God, help me, Lord. Stay on the right track. Everybody needs to turn it up a little bit. The Antichrist is turning it up like I have never seen. This secular world is a mess like I've never seen. And it's almost like the enemy is turning it up. But I believe it's time to make a clarion call from the pulpit of redemption and tell somebody in the house, it is time for you to turn it up one degree. Everybody stand up and push your neighbor tell them, turn it up. Come on, tell your neighbor, turn it up. I want to remind you on the day of Pentecost, it was wind and fire. On the day of Pentecost, it was wind and fire. It was wind and fire, not ice or rain. It was wind and fire. Is that any indication? On the day of Pentecost, it was wind and fire. And a wind came in. And cloven tongues sat upon them like fire. He wanted to get his fire in their mouth. He wanted to change their vocabulary. He wanted to change their vernacular. He wanted to put fire on them, but he wanted to gift them with another language that they could speak a heavenly language and communicate from earth to heaven. Woo. It was a, a, a rushing mighty wind that filled the house. Notice it filled the house. He didn't come to give a little dab and think it would do you. He didn't come in and touch just a couple of people. It absolutely filled the house. And when God does something, he fills it up. He doesn't leave the glass half empty. He fills it up. Some of you need to get the fire of God on the inside of you. You get the fire of God on the inside of you. Some of you, it'll help you to keep your hands off that young lady. You get the fire of God on you, it'll put a little space between you and her. You get the fire of God on you, it'll put some conviction in your life. You get the fire of God on you, it'll get you running from sin, but running to Jesus. You get the fire of God on you, it'll help you walk right, talk right. You get the fire of God on you, you won't have to ask anybody, is this dress all right? You know it's going to be of God. When you get the fire of God on you, you won't go everywhere you used to go because you will never want to jeopardize the fire of God that is in your life. Woo! Woo! I mean to make you feel uncomfortable. Hallelujah. Because I know you're thinking in your mind, doesn't he know this makes me uncomfortable? You're absolutely correct. You're absolutely correct. Praise God, this is not that church. I just want you to know right now, we don't beat around the bush. We don't powder puff it. Baby Johnson's is left in the car. Amen. We are here to tell you it's the truth of the word of God. If you live right and walk right, there's no doubt. Saved by the blood of Jesus, you're going to make it. And I'm not looking for a ragtag army. I'm looking for some people of God that are ready to go for it. Anybody in here think I'm preaching all right? Would you mind just standing up and saying, preach on, young preacher. Preach on, preach on. Y'all are going, yep, they're both so tired. You're going to get carried away and you can't take it back. You're going to get carried away and your hands are going to go places. You're going to get carried away and you're going to feel bad afterwards. You're going to get carried away and lose your testimony. Yeah. 
Praise God. Everybody wants the fire to shout good. I want the fire to walk good. I want the fire to talk good. I want the fire to put me in my place. I want the fire to take pride out of the way. I want the fire to let humility show up in my life. I want the fire to love people and want things for other people more than I do myself. I, that's what the fire of God is. I want the fire of God to be a blessing to people and not try to step in on the blessing all the time and take it. That's what the fire of God will do. It just doesn't help you live right. It helps you make good decisions. I want the fire of God to help me to wait on the Lord. I want the fire of God to keep my mind stayed upon him, that he will keep me in perfect peace. I want the fire of God to burn up anything that's not good and pleasing in the sight of the Lord in Todd Hoskins' life. I want the fire of God to make me a powerful testimony that when I talk to people about Jesus, the fire shows up and the power hits them. I want the fire of God. Woo! <laughs> Numbers probably just dropped on the internet just like that. Click, 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 click. You'll click back. You got to watch for the right seasons to do everything that you're going to do. You have to watch for the right seasons. You never want to buy an IROC Z in the summertime, not thinking about what it will be like in February. You never want to have a Mustang GT with a 302 in it. Now they call them five liters. And purchase that thing in August because it looks cool to drive in the summertime. Wait till February hits and you're on an incline only like this. And you're doing circles while everybody else with front wheel drive is passing you up. People don't buy boats in December or January. They're sitting under tarps. They buy snowmobiles. People in July buy boats or they get them in April or May. And, and by July, snowmobiles are parked in the garage. Am I preaching to anybody in the house that you've got to hit it at the right season? There is a season for everything. That's why we have always said there is a reason for the season. Because there's always a place and a time for everything. There is an in-between, and I, I have to pause for a moment to preach this. There is an in-between. Thank you, Jesus. The in-between is lukewarm. This is a person that is neither cold or hot. But at some point has been one of them because they slipped into lukewarm. You're either cold and you went for it a little bit, or you're either hot or you backed up a little bit. And now you're lukewarm. Lukewarm is a word that means tepid. It's moderately warm is what that word means. The Bible says that the Lord promised he would spew us out of his mouth if we were lukewarm. Now, I don't know about you, but I want him talking about me. And not spew my name out of his mouth and forget about the blessings on my life. The key in the book of Revelation that we read to me predominantly is this word called repentance. The key is repentance. The Greek word to it means this, to think differently or afterwards. To reconsider, to repent. That's what the word means. One well, of the most powerful things you can do is reconsider your life and repent for what went wrong and move forward and go as Jesus said and sin no more. Some of us need to hear that scripture. Go and sin no more. Go and sin no more. You have to learn to protect your mind. This is one of the most powerful weapons that we have that the enemy can utilize. I believe that Jesus saves us and we give our hearts to the Lord, but a lot of people forget about giving their mind to the Lord. You don't just give your heart to the Lord, you give your mind to the Lord as well. You must protect your mind because the mind is constantly full of artillery and arrows that are shot that you have to protect your mind. How you think, 
how you think. And the enemy will talk to you. You don't need to go to church. And you get there, you don't need to raise your hands. You thought about what you've got to do tomorrow and Wednesday and Thursday. How are you going to handle all that? Right at the time you're sitting here in the house of God. It's amazing how less the attacks are when you're watching kids play basketball in a gymnasium. It's amazing on Saturday afternoon watching college football that the attacks don't come like they do in church. I don't ever hear the enemy talk to me and say, don't lift your hands for that team. Don't you stand up and shout for your favorite team. He never fights me like that. Something happens, I get out of my chair, I say, Whoa, hallelujah. I say, watch him run. And come to church. Come to church. And the enemy never says on a Saturday afternoon, he's a fake, he's not a real football player. He's just out there running. He's a hypocrite. Can I preach on a little bit? This is why you have to protect your mind. Peter took himself out of God's will for his life by distancing himself from the Lord. It's always a fact. When you see people start to miss, move out of the position they were in. I'm not gonna say front or back here. Whenever you see people make a move and then all of a sudden it's hit and miss and then all of a sudden you don't see them anymore, they distance themselves. They distance themselves. Come on, talk to me, somebody. Help, help me, church, walk on some toes for a minute so I can help people. We're not going to be a fluffy church. Come on, we want to be a solid church. And whenever people start to distance themselves from the Lord, they most commonly will distance themselves from you to start. They will walk away. They'll walk away. Because you set expectations. And those expectations weren't just convictions. They were biblical. And people will start to step away from you. And, and those of you that are spiritual need to go restore such a one. I have to call people all the time and hear things that they got into and made mistakes that I have to keep right here in my brain and never tell a soul, never tell anybody what they just said. And pray them right back in and say, hey, 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 you, you, you're not a quitter. You're not going to quit over this. You're not that messed up. God's grace is more powerful. He's got grace and mercy on you. You get yourself back here on Sunday. You get yourself back here on Wednesday. And the excuses start to roll and they're never biblical. They're always the advice of the enemy trying to attack somebody's mind. Brother Peter knew he was at a distance to the point where they started talking to him and a damsel looked at him and said, I, I recognize you. He said, I am not. And even started cussing so it would make it look like I camouflage my Christianity. He compromised it and he's backing off. And all of a sudden he starts saying it exactly like that. I'm not, I'm not one of them because distance. This is what creates cold. This is when you get them. Church, I want you to know this morning, I love you. I'm thankful for this church. I'm thankful for 70 acres. I'm thankful for a John Deere tractor. I'm thankful for the Pentecostal pavilion. I'm thankful for every little orange basketball in the Dunamis Center. I'm thankful for monitors and speakers. I'm thankful for a media department. I'm thankful for social media. I'm thankful more than anything that the presence of God is here and we have the precious people of God sitting in pews. I am so thankful. But let me tell you something. I have no plans to retreat in the name of Jesus. I have no plans to go back in Jesus' name. Push your neighbor. 
I'm giving you scripture after scripture. I'm giving you instance after instance where people started backing up and getting distant away from church. I'm so thankful for the migration of young adults and young married couples that are coming into this church that want to get the fire of God back in their life. I'm so thankful when people come in and say, Pastor, I got so dry. I don't know what happened. I tried to find a place, but I ended up here. I'm so thankful you preach like you preach. You don't know the voices of people that said they would have gave up if I just wouldn't have preached it right. I'm preaching because I have to answer to God. I'm preaching because I have to answer to his precious word. I'm preaching like this because I'm concerned. God, don't put somebody else in there when God, I'll do it for you. I don't want any compromise. I don't want to bend and bow and budge and give up. I want the blessings of God over my life. Let's stand up all over the church. Tell your neighbor, I want his blessings on my life. It's sad. You know, it's sad. The servants and the officers made a fire of coals. And after he denied the Lord, he goes over to people that had just built a fire and tries to warm himself in it, but finds out that's not the fire that I need. The fire I'm looking for is on the inside. Hallelujah. I believe God has put us in a 30-year test, a 30-year trial. And I believe what is starting to happen is pews are going to get more full on Sunday morning, packed like it is right now. I believe that. And I believe when the fire falls, the miracles happen, the house continues to get packed, promotion arrives, can we be trusted with it? Can we be trusted when miracles start breaking out in the church? Can we be trusted when our young people start running to the altar? Our sons and daughters answer the call into ministry. We're continuing to push missions out. We're continuing to build buildings. Can we be trusted with what God wants to do next? And the only way you'll graduate from where you are is to pass the test you're being tested with right now. What will you do with what God wants to give you? You can commercialize it. You can splatter it all over town. And people can come running. But if you have no depth and no foundation, you just build an emotional roller coaster without really preaching to people and telling them, listen, listen men, listen women, listen young adults, listen young people, listen grandma and grandpa, don't lose your fire. You're never gonna be old fashioned. You're never gonna be outdated. Never, never, never. Because this will never get old. This will never get outdated. This will never lose fire. It will never lose power. Never. This preaching is never going to be dated. You can go back a hundred years if a man's preaching on Jesus, it'll never get old. Never. You can take this message 200 years from now and it would still be applicable. The fire of God. It's not always a popular message. It's not always the message that's well received. It's not always the message that people are going to shake their head and agree with. But it's the fire of God that I want. And I don't want strange fire offered to the Lord. And I don't want a fire the world made that I can go warm myself. And you could preach on that all by itself. You could preach on it. I want the fire of God in this house. Great are you, Lord.